Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity of uh, speaking to you about Eco Church. I was asked just to briefly say something about Arosha as well. So I'll start with a couple of slides on that uh, to begin with. Thank you. Um, Arosha UK uh, is about 20 years old. Uh, Arosha is the Portuguese for the rock and uh, Arosha started in Portugal and was brought to Britain by Dave Bookless. It works for the protection and restoration of the natural world and they, they work really hard to empower Christians to encourage other people to do the right thing. Their five core commitments are these, that everything must be Christian uh, in its approach. It's all about conservation and community. Nothing is done to people, but everything is done within community. So people are supported. Very important as well that it's cross-cultural, so we learn from other cultures and that it's all cooperative. And you'll see there are things about what you hear later on where cooperation with other organisations is encouraged. They work with churches through the Eco Church programme, through church leaders, through interdenominational convening work, through families and individuals, through their Wild Christian programme and with land managers in their Partners in Action network. They themselves have two um, nature reserves which are rooted in their own community but also serve as demonstration sites. So there's the logo. Often you'll see an oak leaf, but this is the oak tree, the more usual one. Now the programmes in Eco Church are as follows. Eco Church for individual churches of any denomination. And then for those denominations that have a greater structure to them. So, for example, the Methodist Church has an Eco Circuit Award, the Anglican an Eco Diocese Award, the Methodists also have an Eco District Award, the uh, URC has an Eco Synod Award. Um, and then historically, Eco Church came from Eco Congregation. When that changed five years ago, the Church of Scotland decided they would take ownership of Eco Congregation and not move to Eco Church. So, there is an eco-congregation thing run by the Church of Scotland, so it's a different colour. But there's also the Catholic Live Simply Award. They wanted to do something a bit different, it's not great so, but it's administered by Arosha for CAFOD. So that's a sort of general programme. There are three levels of award. There's a bronze, which has a desktop assessment and receives a plaque or a certificate. A silver, the same sort of thing and a gold, which has an initial desktop uh, assessment and then a visit by an inspector, so somebody like me. Um, the plaques have to be paid for. They are made in the Grass Market Project in Edinburgh, where I'm sitting at the moment, uh, in a social enterprise, uh, helping people with health, uh, mental health issues to acquire skills. And it's a really worthy thing, but they are quite expensive. Uh, so here's uh, a bronze award, you'll notice the wood is different in each because they come from old pews taken out of churches that have reordered. So the bronze award, a silver award and the coveted gold award. Uh, we're having been through Eco Congregation, we find that the, the plaques don't last outside. Um, and so we took the decision not to go for a plaque when we got the second gold award in the country. Uh, we decided to stick with the uh, certificate which looks like that. I've kept the original and from it I photocopy to either laminate and put on boards outside church or have in a frame within church but it means it, it doesn't degrade. I have the original from which I can keep repeating the, the award as it were. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry we're not supporting the grass market project but it just works better for us that way. So there are five areas you need to consider. There's worship and teaching, buildings, land, community and global engagement and personal lifestyle choices. One of the questions I'm, I'm hoping might get through the, the, the ones that I sent to Joanne uh, is what do you consider the worship and teaching in your church that would constitute the um, one of these areas for you? Buildings, obviously, it might be the church, the church hall, the, the, the manse or the vicarage, church office, whatever you have, land, Many churches have a, uh, are on a street front and don't have much land, but there are still things you can do with a pathway that walks around your church for maintenance purposes. Community and global, I think, speaks for itself and the personal lifestyle choices of your congregation. So how to get started? You need to register as an eco-church 
and do the survey. Now, the survey has multiple choice statements to select from, which cover all aspects of the five areas. And I'm just going to show you one example from each area. So from worship and teaching, it might be caring for God's earth is preached about in our church. And then you tick, at least annually, less often, never need to find out. And I will talk about points in a moment. For the, um, the building, the, the building is fully double glazed, some double glazing, secondary glazing, some secondary glazing, not at all, need to find out. And then NA listed, because obviously you're not going to be penalised if you can't do something because you're a listed building. The land at our church is managed with the encouragement of native wildlife, birds, animals and plants. Yes, no, need to find out. Our church, look at this one, either alone or as part of a, another network, organised environmental awareness raising events. So you are encouraged to work with, with other networks locally to you. That may be other churches, other denominations, or it may be secular organisations locally. And again, yes, no need to find out. The church encourages, this is your um, personal lifestyles, the church encourages members to go home, uh, to use at food at home that is loaf, locally grown, organic, animal friendly, fair trade. Yes, no, need to find out. So let's have a look briefly at the role of the survey. It is your starting point. It helps you to see what you already do. And I have worked with a lot of churches helping them through this initial um, step forward and they have always been amazed at what they can tick as being part of their their church culture so it's usually an empowering experience where you can't tick the best response it acts as your action plan so when you when you tick this on the live document on the internet you can return to it as many times as you like so if for example on that preach the preaching one annually less often if you have to tick less often initially but you can move to annually you can change that so in effect the um, survey becomes your action plan as you strive and aspire to get to the best possible response it acts in, as an ed memoir for what you need to find out if you as the person filling it in don't, don't know something it may stimulate an action or an activity you wouldn't have thought of because there are some things in there that are quite accessible and easy to do, but you might just not have thought of. And in the end, when you filled it in to the best of your ability, it becomes your submission. And that is what is sent to Arosha. So points mean prizes. As you fill the survey in, the system automatically awards you points according to which level of response you give in each of the five areas and the five areas are treated separately. As the points add up, they produce a dial which starts at bronze and moves to silver and to gold. And again, in each area, so five dials. And you can apply for an award when you have the same color in all five areas. So you can apply for a bronze when you have that level across all areas, though you might have a silver or a gold in, in one area, but you can apply for it when you've got bronze across the lot. Likewise, silver, you might have an odd gold in there, but you must have silver in all five areas. And a, for a gold award, you must have this level across all five areas. There are some information boxes at the end, and you should make full use of these. When we applied for our Eco Church Award. Our vicar was leaving and she had been very enthusiastic and very helpful and we wanted some sort of closure for her. At that time we had two bronzes and three, three golds on our dials so all we could apply for was a bronze award but because of what I'd put it in the info boxes that gets assessed by a real live person not an electronic system and what we got in the end was a gold award because of what I'd written in the info boxes. So you should use them to explain why you haven't done or can't do something mentioned in the survey. For example, we couldn't have double glazing in our church because we're a listed building. So I said that. We didn't, uh, we couldn't tick that we had our LED lighting. And what I put in the info box was that a new lighting system guaranteed for 15 years had been fitted five years previously. 
and that we were not going to get rid of what we had that was functioning properly uh, until it was ceased to function because of the embedded carbon in that original system. But that as soon as we needed to change it, we would then use what was the most environmentally friendly system available. And they said that that was indicative of the, of the correct mindset, that you don't just kick into touch something you have because something better has come along. You need to consider the embedded carbon in what you have and make full use of that before you buy something else, because in the meantime, something better may have come along anyway. So to explain what you haven't done or can't do, and also to tell Arosha about things that you have done that aren't mentioned in the survey, because the survey is not completely inclusive of everything you could possibly do. And this will be looked at by human beings rather than just an electronic system, and they will add relevant points to your, to your uh, profile. So if you're struggling just to hit the next level in one of the areas, it may be that what you say in your info boxes will do that for you. So use the info boxes really seriously. So why should we do this? Um, ben, you, you, you might blanch at this. I have permission from Gideon Hugh to use two of his poems for these sort of things. So please don't think I'm doing this uh, wrongly. Um, I can remember sharing a stage with a member of Transition Kendall, and it was a Christian meeting, but they'd asked him to come and speak. And he stood up and he said, I am an atheist, but I am astonished that you people who profess a God whom you believe created the world are in not in evidence at all in the transition movement or in other local environmental movements. And that was a real wake up call for me. Clearly Gideon Hugh has had some similar experiences. And for those of you who don't know, he works for Tear Fund, but he's a published poet. Uh, and some of his poetry is really challenging. So he wrote this little poem. I stand outside the barred church doors, hammering with my fists while around me the world dies. I don't want to be let in, but pray for those inside to come out and join the fight. So in, in the chat room I've been in, we've been talking about how do you get going? What, what easy first steps can encourage people? I'm going to give you a couple or three for each of those five areas. So for worship and teaching, in the run up to COP26, include environmental issues in your intercessions. Pray for the, the state leaders coming. Pray for the pressure groups who are going to be there demonstrating outside. You could create a notice board and put on environmental articles from the press. They're coming thick and fast at the moment. There is no shortage of material. It highlights to your congregations that there are things they need to take note of. And you could change to organic fair trade communion wine. Uh, when we started this, Paterium was the only company doing both organic and fair trade. I'm sure there are others now, but you could just change. They also do a non-alcoholic version for churches who want that. So for buildings, a very simple thing, change to using recycled toilet paper and save some CO2 per roll. You could get the young people to tot up how much carbon you've saved by doing the sums, the, the, the maths on how many loo rolls you use a month or whatever. You could change to a renewable energy provider if you haven't yet done so, but check the credentials carefully. Not all of them actually generate energy renewably, but by offsetting certification, you need to check that they are generating um, energy renewably or that what they use is definitely generated renewably. You could change to environmentally friendly cleaning materials. Where possible, make sure that the, the packaging is recycled and recyclable and in the best of all worlds, refillable. Very proud our little village shop in uh, Levens in Cumbria has just started uh, a refillable packaging uh, process for cleaning household cleaning materials. Um, right, so just some, some simple things that you can get going with and they will encourage your congregation to, to feel this is an accessible thing to do. Land, make sure there's something in flower all around the year to help our beleaguer pollinators. Make a policy decision never to use chemical herbicides, fertilizers, etc., on your land. You could make a bug hotel out of pallets with gaps filled with lots of different materials. Kids 
love doing this a couple of pictures just to encourage you if you have no land at all or you front onto the street or you've only got a a pathway around your church you can still have pots or window boxes or hanging baskets that, that you can do something creative wherever you are whatever your circumstances and this is what a pallet bug hotel might look like um, it will very quickly become populated with bees and little critters um, but young people love love building them and they they are a really good thing to do right local and global engagement you could organize a recycling for good causes event if you don't know this company google them they do everything for you they send you bags they send you a list of what they currently can get recycling credits for everything is done for you you have your collection you put it in their bag you leave it on your front doorstep they arrange the collection and about six weeks later you get a check for 75 percent of the recycling credits that they've accrued from your recycling and it's always stuff you can't put in curbside collections really good company absolutely fail safe very easy leaflet your local community and tell them you're going green and ask if anyone would like to join you it, th this whole topic is a wonderful outreach tool when people see the church being relevant they join in and then from the global point of perspective invite someone from one of the big charities or organizations to come and talk or preach at one of your services and help them help your congregation to to think outside the box and personal lifestyles encourage your congregation to garden organically but also to buy organic products uh, because you need this joined up thinking uh, of, of helping other people to protect their land as well suggest some straightforward simple challenges your congregation might adopt and put them on uh, a pledge tree offer some books about environmental issues uh, and and how you know how to move forward for people to borrow we we just have a little a little shelf on top of the hymn book cover and people can just borrow them um i have sent um joanne a list of uh some resources that might be useful to you and if you've never used a pledge tree you can have a two-dimensional one on a board and just have some leaves people fill in the pledge they're making i think it does help people to really take it seriously if they've made this pledge before god in their church and it's there on the pledge tree it helps you just to focus on it a little bit more so um we've been talking a lot in our um in, in all our sessions about how serious this issue is and in COP26, the, church, the state leaders, the, the international leaders are going to have to do the heavy lifting and change policy. But it is also important that we know, don't, don't only have the top down approach, we have the bottom up approach. Now, I can't read this out to you because I've got pictures and, and things across my picture of the starfish story. So I'll just summarize it quickly. An old man walking on the beach saw somebody who looked as if they were dancing. As he got closer, he realized that what she was doing was bending down, picking up a starfish and throwing them gently into the sea. Why are you throwing starfish into the sea? The sun is up, the tide's going out, and if I don't throw them back into the water, they'll die. But young lady, there's miles of beach and thousands of starfish. starfish. You can't possibly make a difference. The young woman listened courteously, bent down, picked up another starfish, threw it into the sea and said, well, it made a difference to that one. And I think we have to focus on the little bits genuinely making a difference. And I'm going to finish with another poem by Gideon Hugh. It brings me to tears sometimes. Um, and I, again, I won't be able to read all of it, I think, because of these pictures on my screen, but I think I know it well enough to, to speak it to you as well, but you can read it along with me. So this is from um, his book, Devastating Beauty, his poetry book, and it's called Prophet. I wonder why you brought me to these splintering days, this age of earth's death and default extinction and the smothering of constellations. Nostalgia claws at me, screaming, send me back. Then I sense a fire that doesn't consume, a cloud of breathtaking beauty passing across the face of a mountain. And it says, I put you here to see and hear and feel the agony. I needed someone whose heart would break, who would fall to their knees screaming, send 
me. And I hope that we as individuals and our churches can be those people who will want to be sent to do something. I'm very happy to be a, 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 at the end of an email to be a resource for you, to discuss something with you, to advise in any way I can. I've also sent Joanne a list of all the good pra practice I've seen as an inspector for Arosha over 20 years. Um, so there will be things there that you can have a look at. If there's anything that's not quite clear, get in touch with me and I can explain it for you know, clearly to you um, because I've seen all those projects actually functioning. But I would be very happy to be supportive in any way I can. And please, you will get this presentation. Please use the email if it's helpful to you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Pam. That was really good. Lots of really practical, simple things we can do. And like just taking that first step. How many activities can you think of that are considered part of worship and teaching? What sort of habitats or food sources could you create to protect and encourage biodiversity? And how do you reach out to your local community? So there's some starters for 10 for questions and we'll go back into our breakout rooms for 10 minutes or so um, and then come back together for a panel discussion at the end. Do you know what about Olympics? There's been a lot of um, Olympics things and people showing off their gold medals on the press. So Pam is here to show off her gold medal. Um, her church got a gold eco award and she's been doing some, uh, she's just some speaking for a Russia. And it's going to explain to us one of the practical ways that we can move forward and looking at the eco award, um, as well as some of the other things that they've done. So I'll hand over to Pam. So am I, am I just doing screen share now? Right, is, is that right? Have I got, have I got this yes. right? Yes, okay, right. Well, oh.
No, it's not moving on. Just click on the slide and then try and move it. Oh, that means going out of the... Oh, no, no, on. just as it shows you the... Oh, there we go, right. And I've posted three of your questions in the chat. Um, we're now going to go into our last breakout room, which will be about 10 minutes or so. Um, and again, a chance to, to those questions 